everybody, it's Joe Roberts of OneWineDude.com. I am backstage at uh, sort of at Sonoma Wine Country Weekend 2012. I'm here with a, a scion of the wine world, Gina Gallo, who, uh, yeah, they're out there. You look tough to them. Oh, yeah, I see them. <laughs> Mesmerized by you, Joe. No, please. They're a lot, they're a lot <laughs> better looking. Mesmerized by they're, a lot, they're a lot better looking than I am. And um, Hi. I mean, I you know this it's the, the wine world knows your name. Uh, almost no one who drinks any kind of wine isn't familiar with the name of Gallo. You're the biggest producer, single producer in the world now. I think under the family name, right? For for a family, um, well, being family owned, yes. Wow. We so, make a few bottles. Yeah. <laughs> and then we make some small bottles though for the ones yeah, we're tasting here which today. Is what I want to talk about yeah. So. Um, the wine world probably, some of the people watching this probably don't know your, your official day job. I mean, they know you as part of an heir to an empire. And congratulations, by the way, on, on the birth of the twins. Thank you. So I don't know how you get around. I have Two little girls. Wow, I don't, you'll pay for Motherhood that. Motherhood is awesome. You'll pay for that later. Because I'm learning <laughs> uh, with, a, with a four year old girl myself. But I'm really dreading the teenage years. So it, it, it's amazing because your husband, of course, is also part of the wine world and has a, a, a large wine empire in France. And, and medieval empires weren't built this well in terms of that marriage. So I find it, it's, it, I'm, I was always curious, so how did you meet your husband? And it almost looks like a prearranged marriage. You, know, you couldn't do it that well in medieval Europe. Well, I know um, it's not prearranged, by the <laughs> no. way. No, because he's French. Um, and I'm <laughs> a little the Italian, accent. obviously. It was the accent, <laughs> so okay. That no, but uh, he's, his family's from Burgundy. They have some lovely Burgundy houses, some of the top right in the Grand Cru's, which is amazing. I honestly loved Pinot before I met him, so that was a good thing. He didn't have to persuade me on that level. lucky. <laughs> but we met actually on neutral ground in Bordeaux. So it was in France, but it was in Bordeaux about, gosh, almost eight years ago now. Wow. Um, yeah, fun, you know, you know. So uh, I have to say I was kind of no, 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 but he's the best. Best Great. thing that ever happened in my life. Wow! So you got the man, After the little girls now. And the man, the <laughs> no, girls, and the little girls, and the burgundy. So that's that's a pretty that's a pretty good catch. He's number three now, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling too. I'm I'm number three as well. It's my my daughter, the dog, and then and See, then me. That that's how it works. That's my wife being at the top. Of the point. So, that's how we met. So it was a really um, good friend of ours um, who's actually in the wine business before on the writing side and introduced us. Not to be, per se, anything to happen, just be friends, good, you know, we thought we'd get along. Um, similar thoughts and ideas as far as what we were doing. We really wanted to, for ourselves, the one you're tasting today, is really drive up quality and um, higher end on it. Really more interesting wines with uh, terroir base, all of that good stuff. Um, and we, did, we, you know, we're having fun. We're having a good time. So your day job. Yes. You're a winemaker. Uh, most in the high end of, of the Gallup portfolio, and you've got a new line called Signature. And that's what we've got right here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the wine, kind of what you're doing, what excites you about the project. The Signature Series um, is a new line we just came out with. It's been out for almost about a year. It's mostly in restaurants and fine wine shops. Um, Chardonnay's from Russian River, which we're in the heart of Russian River right here. Um, it's first time for myself and what's the family name, because it's Gallo, and then on it, it we call it the Signature Series. And it's my signature. The only reason being is I just promise these wines are going to rock, have personality, really speak about the land. Um, and I say that just because I couldn't do it without my family. The reason being is all these three wines are estate grown fruit um, that has been, you know, the Laguna that we're tasting here was from 77. My grandfather and my great uncle Ernest purchased. And we've been working with that vineyard for many years. When I knew I wanted to do a Chardonnay, I was coming to Russian River. I knew that was the vineyard. I love it. Our estate. Um, Chardonnay as well comes from there. Reason being, it's just nice acidity, has richness, quite a bit of the new French oak, but the oak is just really bringing in the um, flavors, more the spice, the nutmeg, um, honeysuckle type of characters going on. Most importantly, creating these wines, the new line. I love foods. I love to pair them up with foods. So all of them will never be over the top on the alcohol, but more of that balance of the alcohol. Layers, very subtle complexities, uh, but beautiful food wines. So this is a Chardonnay. When I was mentioning venturing out, all of our upper tier wines have always been focused in Sonoma because it is a beautiful place to make wine, very diverse. You can make an awesome Cabernet from Dry Creek or Alexander Valley, Zinfandel, a Pinot Chard. Yep. You know, it's just and an got, interesting county. West, uh, they're loving the oh, Pinots from the uh, West. From the West. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Um, but that being said, we're going to come out with a Pinot as well and a Cabernet. Cabernet, 
Napa Ranch. It's hard to beat. I mean, people do love Napa Cabs. So the Cabernet from the Signature Series from We're Napa. in Sonoma, though. We're <laughs> yeah, allowed to say <laughs> that. say that. Okay. And the Pinot. Really? Ah! <laughs> okay, then I can say the Pinot's from the Central Coast. You can, yeah, absolutely. Santa Lucia. West County is probably, I don't know, it's, a, it's to me head and head. I love both of them and it was a hard decision, but I decided why not have the triangle. Santa Lucia for the Pinot, Napa for the Cab, and Russian River for the Chardonnay. Um, now, and, and you get kind of the pick of the litter? Is that what's going on? So you're able to canvas kind of all your properties, which you, you've got lots of land all this, and, and pick what you thought or what you liked best, your favorite fruit? And Is that's that exactly it. Wow. It's a personality style for myself creating wine, which vineyard that our family has owned. Um, as many years, which one, which would I choose from? And that could change next year, it could change the year after. But for right now, loving the Laguna for the uh, Chardonnay, Santa Lucia. Yeah, and I just chase it really quickly here. There's a nice, there's a nice center line there between like the apple and the richness, and it definitely has some acidity. So uh, certainly, from a food perspective, it's conjuring up. Yeah, it's conjuring up some nice stuff in my mind. It's interesting you say the apple too because this vineyard used to be all gravity seen apple. Oh, interesting. And I'm not going to go that specific on this wine, but <laughs> I'm definitely going to say some yellow and green apple going on. Uh, one thing I want to ask you, uh, I think you know, a lot of people will look at the Gallo family and, and you know, I, I would kind of view Gallo as having the kind of money that could you know, have me uh, buried somewhere under the Russian River and no one would ever know about it, like that kind of money. It was to call it like di somebody disappear money. Back where I come from, and but you've got you've got a winery day job. So, I mean, walk us through kind of a, a little bit of the day and that life for you in the winery, because I think, especially coming from a position where you wouldn't have to work unless you really enjoyed what you were doing to be comfortable, right? So, uh, I think people would wouldn't mind getting inside your head a little bit mm -hmm. about that. Um, if you get up during the day and what what what. What's motivating you? What brings you into the winery when you could say on a bad day, stuck fermentation, you know what, I don't have to deal with this. You know, I could go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, it's a good question. I think um, the short story is I adore to be able to create something special that I really believe in and share because that's what it's about. Wine is at the table. So you're sharing it with other people and most importantly, it's you have food, you have wine, but the most is people around the table. So for me to be able to do that is extremely rewarding. Wow. I mean, in the wine world, we're so that's, it's a great gift to be able to do and create. And yes, it's about the wine. Yes, the wine better be amazing today. Um, but it's about bringing the people together. So I love that about my job. The other side I love is getting out in the dirt, being in the winery. I love to cook. I'm the type of individual that I collect cookbooks. I love to look at them. I never read the recipes. <laughs> so when I'm cooking, it's like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I really create things. But what I do when I'm looking at those cookbooks, it's giving me ideas and it's, um, it's definitely inspiring me on what I want to make. And I oh, find interesting. That so you've gone from the kitchen kind of to the winery. The same so with that, the now wine. Now that makes sense. Now, and what you've talked about with this wine, that, that connection makes a lot of sense. I'm out in the vineyards. Uh, right now we're in the part of, you know, we're in the middle of the park. So you're out in the Thank you for your time doing that, by the way. Well, no. <laughs> this is I, can, I can only imagine. <laughs> it's a good break. Yeah. Sitting at what time? It's okay. Yeah. Sitting um, somewhere. Yeah, so being out in the vineyard, it's the same similar as looking at those cookbooks. I'm definitely inspired walking the vineyards at Laguna, looking at the grapes, thinking of what I did last year and how those grapes are evolving this year and how do I want to create it once I bring those grapes into the winery. I love that side of it and I love the side that makes you stay connected because the wine, once they come in, the grapes, you're fermenting, you have to be tasting not only once a day but morning and night. And it's evolving, it's, you know, it's changing, it's really alive. Even when you put it in the bottle, as we know, that's why you have to know, not have to know, but eventually a wine is going to die. These type of wines will last for quite a long time, so you don't have to worry about that. But it's, um, it's always evolving, so I love that side of it. But how I got into the business, obviously I grew up in it. And I think even most importantly, like many of the people that are watching, I think you have two camps. You have some young people that they know in fourth grade they want to grow up to be a, I don't know, lawyer, doctor, My daughter a farmer, wants to be a, pa a paleontologist at four and a half. Oh my God. Yeah, so it's great. And I have some nieces and nephews. They're telling me what, I'm like, it's amazing. I find it fortunate that they really have that desire. It might change, but right now they really feel it's true. I was the other polar opposite. I had no clue. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Even through college, the one thing I just really learned is I saw what my mother did teaching, my father with the wine, um, family winery. Um, they loved what they did. And 
and I just felt, even with them not telling you, it's like follow your passion, not your pension. And went to school for basically it was um, I didn't go away from one I went for something else. And it was just on the road path of trying to find out what I'd like to do. It wasn't until after graduation that I went back to UC Davis on the wine side. Um, and once I hit those classes, I was like, wow, this is I adore. It. So school, college, I liked, but I wasn't the studious one always there. And I was there having fun with great friends, <laughs> enjoying the balance of life. I'm sure um, nobody watching this. Bit, that's not how they definitely. approach college. Um, but after college, I went and started. I knew I wanted. The only thing I knew for sure is being in our family business because I really loved both grandparents. People coming around the table, they were talking about different things, and I felt connected to that and wanted to keep that alive, and keep it in the family. But I didn't want to just go to the family business just to go into it. It was where do I really? What do I love? I started out in sales because it's a great way. If anyone is out there wants to venture into the wine world, sales is a good place to start because you can learn a lot of different wines. Um, you are pushing your moving case. It's not easy. It's not glamorous work unless you just have the top-end restaurants. Then it could be. So it was a great way for me to learn. I have to say, a month into my job, talking to uh, different mom and pop shops, selling wine. I loved building their business and trying to find a wine that would naturally sell itself so they can build their business. I like building that, but I would have, our wine room would have gone broke if I stayed in sales. Because <laughs> it was like sometimes I had some really small shops that they were barely making ends meet. And I'm like, that's okay next week. It's okay. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. so. That being said, though, when I started the sales, I really wanted to go away and learn more of the science behind wine. I grew up in the farming aspect, I knew the grape, I knew how to clean, but not really was in the winery that much. So I wanted to understand more of the science, the cream, the wine, the two C. Davis, the short story line. I sat through my first course, Sensory um, with Ann Noble, which I loved. Very interesting, quick story there is in our family, wine was on the table, food was almost more important than the wine, but as I was mentioning, you better be there at the time for dinner, because we had to be there, and it was strict in that regard. But my best memories were around the table. It's a real Italian house. Yeah. <laughs> I can attest to that too. Yeah, in the summertime, you know, you want to be out riding your horse, you want to be best, and you want to be at oh, dinner. Um, so I really appreciated that course, because I really learned the dynamics of what wine is about. It is food. It's as complex as food. And, you know, our table was very simple. We didn't get into the, you know, swirling and snow. I don't remember any of that as a youth growing up. Um, nor should we deal with that much of it today. <laughs> but um, that course and then the uh, science with um, Dr. Linda Basson. Those two courses, I do not miss my And I found myself literally setting, you know, 50 And that was new because that didn't happen. Bit as by I the say, bug. in college, yeah, yeah, so I was bug. addicted. Um, unfortunately, not on one wood still. I really enjoy it. It's great that it is a family thing because I think for the wine world, it's in a family business. It doesn't. You're not. Uh, you're not going to see results next year. You're five years out, and I think um, it's not a business about stocks because it's hard to pay you for what happens. It's really that long-term generational thing. You're looking at that next generation, and I really see that. Here. So what I'm doing, my brother Matt, as well as parents and Oma, uh, other siblings and cousins, it's really we're thinking about how. We're how do you keep the life of the next generation? How do you properly plan the vineyard system, the farm, and all that good stuff? Um, great saying my grandpa used to say the, the richest goods we have is the soil beneath our feet. And it's so true. And you just give back a little, it'll give you back twofold, threefold. I mean, it's, we're, we're fortunate in this area to bless with great farm and we need to make sure that we're watching it, preserving it. Um, yeah, it's kind of today. Now with two girls, so now I'm having, now it's balance of real life. Having a husband was one thing. <laughs> Meeting a Frenchman was one thing. Uh, but the girls, God bless all you mothers and fathers out there. <laughs> no one tells you the truth. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's what I would say too. <laughs> if, if they tell you they got it all sorted out, that's so you know they don't know what they're talking about. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, th well, thank you so much. You know, really, really appreciate meeting everyone. Kidding. Be on the lookout for uh, the signature series. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Joe, thank you.